So this is the scariest thing I've ever done in machining. We're about to run this at 600 inches a minute, and that's by far the fastest that I've ever gone. This is more than twice as fast as I've ever ran a shell mill. I gotta say, I'm pretty scared. So I've been machining for almost 20 years now. My dad's a machinist, my grandpa was a machinist, so I've been in shops my whole life. My initial approach to machining this part was to use an end mill to rough it out, and when I programmed it in SolidCam and showed it to Titan, he suggested using a face mill to try to cut down on some of the roughing cycle time. So I programmed this at 250 inches a minute, which sounds really fast to me. But when I talked to Titan about it, he said it was way too slow. He wants to go 600 inches a minute, which honestly scares the shit out of me. So we're gonna start at 250 inches a minute and work our way up to 600. So let's see how it goes. See how it goes. So at 250 inches per minute, if we were to let this cut the entire part, it would take about 15 minutes of cycle time. All right, so starting to get a little nervous. Here's 400 inches a minute. Yeah, this is at 100 thou depth of cut too. At 400 inches a minute, the roughing cycle would take about 10 minutes. All right, so before we get to 600 inches a minute, it's really important for us to understand the limits of our machine when it comes to torque and horsepower. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing we need to do is find our machine's torque and horsepower chart online. I've got our YCM C10 chart pulled up on my computer here. At first glance, it just looks like a bunch of numbers and lines. Really, I didn't understand these charts until yesterday when I watched one of Barry's old videos. So the x-axis is the RPM that we're running at. The y-axis on the left side is the torque, and on the right side we have horsepower. So our bottom blue line is our continuous horsepower. We can run at these speeds and feeds all day without having any issues. Then as we move up the chart, we have S2, which we can run at for 30 minutes. And then we have S3, S6, which we can run at 30 horsepower for 25% of the time and at 40 horsepower for 15% of a 10 minute cycle. So after we've hit these limits, we need to let the machine cool down. This chart's gonna make a lot more sense once we look up what our tool will actually need to run at the programmed feeds and speeds. So to do that, we can get on Kenamental's website and we can build out our exact tool assembly. So I've got the inserts I'm using here, the face mill I'm using here, and the adapter that it's mounted on. So after we've got our assembly built, we can come up here and click on feeds and speeds, and then we can type in our axial depth of cut, which in this case was 0.1. Our radial width of cut, I have it set at 2.25, and you'll see why in a minute, but that is our biggest radial width of cut. So we've got our surface footage here, which works out to 10,000 RPMs. Right now I've got it at 5,000 per tooth feed rate, which is our 200 base level. So I sketched out our tool going around our part, and at this corner here is where our biggest radial engagement will be. So it's about two and a quarter inches. For the majority of this cut, it's gonna be less as it goes around the part. So we'll have lots of breaks for the spindle to be cooling down while we're taking these cuts. To run at 200 inches a minute at this axial depth of cut and radial width, we need 8.3 foot-pounds of torque and 15.8 horsepower. So I pulled up our chart and our feeds and speeds calculator side by side. All right, so we can see clearly here that at 10,000 RPMs, we have a lot more than 8.3 foot-pounds of torque. So for horsepower, we can see that we can run at 20 horsepower continuously. So we're well within the range there. So 200 inches a minute is not even coming close to pushing the machine to what it's capable of. Now at a 400 feed rate, we need 13.7 foot-pounds of torque and 26.2 horsepower. So now we're pushing past S2 and close to S3. So we can't push the machine at this continuously, but we can still comfortably run at this for a period of time. But we can see that we're still well within the limits of the machine. 600 inches a minute 
We're gonna need 18 and a half foot pounds of torque and over 35 horsepower. So we're still below the top line, but we're really starting to push the machine here. Before learning this, there was always that thought in the back of my head that I would be damaging my machine by pushing it. So I would always default to the safer, slower way. But with this math, I can be super confident that not only is my machine capable of doing this, it's not gonna hurt it at all. So with all that being said, let's go hit the green button at 600 inches a minute. All right, so it's time for 600 inches a minute. This is more than twice as fast as I've ever ran a shell mill. I gotta say, I'm pretty scared, but let's hope for the best. Let's hope for the best. It's doing it. Definitely getting spikes up on the spindle load, but this thing's just handling it. This machine is rock solid. C660. Can we do 720? At 600 inches a minute, our roughing cycle is only gonna take five minutes. All right, that was nuts. We got this thing up to 720 inches a minute and it handled it totally fine. Now we gotta get onto some full slotting and then we're gonna rough out the tapers on the top of our part. Let's get to it. All right guys, we're done roughing the part and I'm super impressed with this YCM C10. It's definitely the best choice at the price it's at. And honestly, this machine's up there with the most rigid machines I've ever run, period. This project really highlights the importance of knowing your machine and how to safely push it. We were able to knock off 60% of our roughing cycle time and that's gonna translate to more money and more contracts for your company. I'm Dre, make sure to leave us a comment, like the video, and subscribe to our channel. I'll catch you guys on the next one. On the next one. Why did I do that? <laughs> I just always am too extra. You might be able to leave that one in. That might be a good end to the video right there.